For your information and for your orientation, I have recorded this video message. It's a secret artifact. My brother Zetaius needs a picture of it. So this is REM 2. It's a lot like REM 1 in that there's barely any story and it's all about the map structure, the intricacies, and the complex puzzles. Yeah, so if like REM 1 was hostile because of its like difficult puzzle at the beginning, this game's hostile to new players because like you don't even have any idea what to even do at the beginning of the game. But like that's what makes it fun. I think. I don't know, why do I like these games again? Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that I do I do love these games, but it's hard to, like, comment on them in a way that's interesting, because... I mean, I guess for the same reason that it's hard to comment on math homework. I mean, if all you're interacting with is panels, I could kind of see a criticism of the REM games as being, like, completely emotionally distant. I mean, I guess at its core, you know, the REM games are mostly about finding random notes strewn across the map and then putting those notes into the appropriate panels. But like, I mean, that's at the heart of any good game. Well, I mean, not really. Though, how does this work? Do I have to figure out like the rate at which one changes to the other? Is this like converting Fahrenheit to Celsius, the puzzle? If you want to convert blue to red, blue times three plus 300. Yeah, that looks about right. We got math too. Didn't I, didn't, what did I say about math problems? That this game is like math problems? Here's a literal math problem. I feel like I've seen this before. Hold on, let me screenshot this. I mean, yes, that's how this game goes. Just literally screenshot everything. I need to change this around and figure out which direction this goes in. So I have these things. So one of them is like that. Man, my innovation of screenshotting though, instead of writing down with pen and paper, just makes everything go so swift. All right, so this guy right here, that matches, right? I'll just mark that with a paintbrush. And there we go, another, another puzzle solved. Wait a minute, this seems to be telling me something that there were originally letters glued here, and so that's how you're supposed to figure this out? Okay, okay, that's a three, I guess. How? I really don't think I can get this open yet. I'm just gonna ignore this for now. Okay, but I can get this open. So what is it? Top left, right left. And yeah, look at that. Oh, and that's for solving the puzzle that I just saw. And then this is showing where the things are. Okay, but this game is actually feeling like an IQ test right now. Use your concepts of spatial reasoning to rotate these objects in your head and line them up. Oh, maybe that's what I can talk about. I can just go like on a random tangent about IQ scores and how they don't mean anything, right? So yeah, like IQ scores aren't even like a measure of intelligence. IQ scores are just like really just a measurement of how good you are at taking IQ tests. All right, I'm done with that subject. Moving on. Actually, I do like this puzzle because it does feel kind of clever, particularly when it comes to this puzzle design, like how this three is connected here. Because by showing the three connected, you both know that, oh, this is definitely connected to this puzzle because this shape looks just like these other ones. And you know how that the three should be orientated on it because it wouldn't be necessarily clear whether it should be reversed or not otherwise. Anyway, now now comes the rotating things in your head part. So like if I'm looking at this this one right here, these two things are right next to each other. And the only two pegs that are close to each other is this other nine right here. So, so that's a nine. It's good that this panel doesn't reset when you leave it, right? You look away, you look back, it stays. Because like, then you don't have to write this down. You can just go back and forth and, and you know, it's less of a hassle. Oh, the eight and the two looks practically the same. I don't even see like, what's the difference between these? They're both connected at the same spot. Um, I, I guess I could just try all different combinations of, of this. 8-2? Okay, yeah, I guess so. Ooh, math! More math! If you love math, you'll love math. Oh, and here's another thermometer thing. But it's a 412 with an N and a thing. I should just screenshot. Just screenshot everything. So, that says 412, which is in red. Okay, I wrote this down. Red is blue times 3 plus 300. So, subtract 300 and you get 112. Now, what's 112 divided by 3? Wait, what? But 1 plus 1 plus 2, that's not divisible by 3. That's not going to work, is it? I don't know. Maybe there's like another unit that I'm missing here. This looks relevant. Oh, see, yeah, there's my problem. These symbols aren't the same as this symbol over here. See, like before you just kind of like ignore this thermometer, but now that you've seen those symbols and you know that you've got to do temperature conversions, suddenly this makes sense. I guess it's a 3 to 2 ratio for these. Already my notes is, is very large. Okay, so 412 in hook degrees is what in the chimney degrees? There, 106 for the chain links. But if I want to get chain link degrees into Y thorn degrees, I still need more information. 
here's the last conversion. It was on this ruler. I don't know, like, what, what measurement system would we have that converts centimeters to temperature? But, uh, sure. For every two chain links, there are seven Ys with a tail. 371? Is that the answer to this puzzle? Alright, there. I turned on some power. I just have to assume that it did something? I mean, I don't know. Alright, let me just, like, go around and push every button again. Alright, so did this open yet? No. Okay, that still does nothing. What did I do by turning on the power? I will say that this is kind of feeling like a little bit Donkey Kong 64 style, where you just like do random things and then stuff happens. It's like, how do you get upstairs? Well, you just have to complete the barrel course. How are you supposed to know that? By completing the barrel course. So like if I saw that, oh, I needed to power something to, to do something, that might have been more satisfying because then once I powered the thing, I'd be able to go there and say, oh, look, it's powered now. All right, here we go. I mean, this is the true REM experience. Being stuck and having to check uh, things over and over and over again. I just feel like I should know what this did. With the three pieces of the star key in hand, I can just plop them in here. And then the first half of this game is complete. You know, I guess I never noticed how self-contained that whole section was. Like, literally all of this information I've used already. Like, I might as well just make an, a new image. I don't know, it's kind of like this is two games in one almost. Okay, time to screenshot more things. And now I've got a fresh plane of screenshots. I mean, even though, like, it is, like, just matched that information on the wall in a different part of the game to the puzzle panel, which is, like, what a lot of this gameplay is, it still requires some ingenuity to, you know, realize how these things connect. And spreading the information out in the game world makes it a lot more fun to solve the puzzles. Whoa, elevator. And, okay, now I opened this other door. Which is helpful because I bet I can go under the elevator if I go back to that door now. I guess that takes some realization. I'm just so used to that kind of puzzle in this game at this point, though, that I just, like, don't even bat my eye at that. I bet you there's gotta be something at the bottom of the elevator. That seems like something that this game would love to do. So am I right? Is there something at the bottom of the elevator? Of course. There it is. One, three, three, two. Okay, yeah, there we go. And here's a thing, too. Um, Alright, I know what this applies to, because I screenshotted this whole diagram here. And I know that this whole thing starts here, and it ends here. So I just need to follow the path. So starting with the circle. Where's the circle at? So op open circle goes to triangle with a line in it. We go down to here. And, oh, why does this move so fast? Oh, oh, because it's moving the wrong direction. That's why it still moves fast. I feel like it's not supposed to move this fast. And then it goes to line. Just gotta tap it, tap it. Yeah, okay, then like that. This is also a cool puzzle because you're like wondering like, how do these things line up? You know, and making the connection about like how this like weird line applies to this diagram is, you know, actually kind of a cool connection to make. Okay, and that's the end. I mean, I feel like because, like, escape rooms are so popular, and, like, this is basically just a big elaborate escape room, that people should love this kind of thing. And, like, escape rooms, they sometimes have a story, but usually the story's, like, really poor. Especially because it's usually told by, like, a 16-year-old who may or may not actually be into their job. I mean, unless you go to, like, the really nice ones. But then those cost, like, more money. Oh boy, oh boy. This is serious math time. Oh boy. Is there a starting shape for this, though? Maybe. Uh, let me solve this, then. Alright, that's the path. Does this do something? I feel like that should do something. Oh, this is wrong. That's right now. No, no. What? How is it still wrong? Oh, it is still wrong. Now it's right. It's still wrong? Alright, now it's right. There it is. I mean, there's, like, diamonds on here. Is that relevant to this? Because there's diamonds on here? Uh, you know, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, see how these, like, three diamonds on the side are, like, these three diamonds on the side? So, like, that's math. But I think maybe I just have to, like, know what these symbols go to? And can I gaze anything from these symbols? Backslash is two. Forward slash is three. All right, so I'll just like fill that in. Okay, I'm definitely just literally doing math homework now, aren't I? One times three times three is nine. 
I mean, come on, this even looks like the kind of worksheet you'd give to students to keep them busy while the teacher goes and watches Netflix on her iPad. Come on, students, can you solve the problems and follow the lines through the maze? Come on, how did I get the math worksheet wrong? It's a math worksheet. Now I've got to check my work. Like, imagine you're in third grade, and you spent all this time doing this worksheet. You get to the end of it, and instead of the teacher telling you why it's wrong, the teacher just says it's wrong. 112. 112? Yeah, it's... Oh, what the fr... What? What? This should have been a 1. And now the whole thing is wrong, and I gotta do the whole thing again. Is this solved yet? Fantastic. What is this thing? What is this thing? What is this thing? So does this have like a spiderweb pattern on the ground at all? I mean, maybe- you can actually- you can look up, you just- You can't see anything. But what does any of this mean? I need to be able to see the ceiling, and I need to have electricity. But why is this laid out like this? But like, what powers these things? Or like, what's supposed to go in here? Hmm. 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 New idea, maybe this puzzle is entirely contained within this room itself. I turn it to this pattern, I push the button, I just have to memorize this pattern of lights here. There, okay, so I just memorize that pattern here and I just Oh! Okay, that's how you get the fuse. Okay, see, I, I feel like I was overthinking this. So now I can go through this, I can place the fuse, and there we go. Now it's all lit up in here. So what does that tell me? I can look up at the ceiling and I can see this spider web pattern. And I just have to remember which region goes with which. I'd have to like write this down. Yeah, not a chance. Pen and paper, more like see you later. Okay, yeah, see, there I go, that's all the information I need. And that's why I was a little bit stucky-wucky, because this was a two-parter puzzle. Yeah, I'm not leaving the word stucky-wucky in the final video, no way. And I mean, that's ultimately what's fun. When something that seems completely incomprehensible and confusing at first, when you go and click the button, it suddenly opens, and everything is fun. Wait, wait, no, wait! That doesn't help me with the generator. This was just its own, like, puzzle on its own, and it didn't have anything to do with the generator puzzle? What the frick? Wait, how do I solve the gen- Like, what is this? What is this thing? It doesn't do anything. What is this? Like, if I go back all the way around, then slide down the one-way chute, then go do the whole elevator puzzle again... Which, I mean, this elevator puzzle is just kind of slow, NGL. Look, I'm just saying if I designed this game, I would have a shortcut bypassing this elevator puzzle so you didn't have to do it again. Because yeah, this whole round trip took like five minutes. And if five minutes doesn't sound like a lot to you, that's because I'm not exaggerating. I could have said like a bajillion minutes and it would have made my point better. But I like truth and accuracy. So maybe you don't press this button. Yeah, oh my god, see that's why I fell for it. This big giant button's glowing and you're just like, oh hey, cool button. But no, don't press the button. Don't press the button, go down into this secret tunnel. Then you could press this button. There's gotta be something underneath the car, right? Guaranteed. There's no way the creator of Rem would be able to resist putting something underneath this car. Oh yeah, no, I'm totally right. And so now I have all the information I need to put in all these panels. Make sure not to make any mistakes here because there's no error checking. You just have to get it all right or it's all wrong. Is this correct? F you! Now guys, I'm addicted to these nerds gummy clusters. Look, share... Focus! Frickin' focus! Look, look, for F you. Look how sweet and sweet... Frick, god damn it! It's gonna get all on my keyboard, these nerds. Alright, hold on. Okay, yeah, so uh, sweet and gummy and irresistible. I love these things. Anyway, so like I was saying, one minor hiccup, but luckily I figured this out. Alright, let me try and figure out what these generator things actually do. Okay, the one it stops hissing at is this. Alright, so just match the data to what I have. Alright, now the data matches. Good, right? This thing will turn now, right? Please, please turn. What could I have done wrong? Uh, it's not a better green. Alright, okay, whatever. Check over everything. Uh, you know, that is kind of like a lighter blue, actually. And not like a darker blue. Hmm. And like the red, that looks like that matches. 
Unless I think it's like pink. It's freaking pink. Okay. Something, something. In what world is red pink? Alright, what we get? What we get? With that. Turn. Oh, is this the disc? Wait, no. I want the disc. Am I captured? Are we gonna get story now? Suvata mi takam bitafu, kumen vatiem tu. My faya tehot, dum mai si de yu titum akame. That should help me do something. I gotta get the right code for that. Whatever, is this this is the secret area of the game, isn't it? And oh I'm in REM 3. This is like the only thing that ever takes place on the surface. What is this? Does this do I know what this is yet? Oh great, I don't know how to get through this door. Is it something that's up here that I can solve yet? This button that just opens that door. Uh Maybe I've gotta go finish the main quest before I can do something in here. Yeah, I got the disc. All right, let's do what we came here for. Let's take a picture of the disc. Please bring the photo of the artifact to my brother Zatias. He will be able to decipher it. Okay, but I can leave now, but I don't wanna leave yet. I still gotta figure out the last part of the special edition puzzle. Ugh. What do I do? What do I freaking do? What do I fr- Okay, sure. Press the button twice, the elevator goes down. What? What? Couldn't you have, like, hinted at this? Somewhere else you could have, like, put, like, a press twice sign or something? Dear friend, you are probably nearing the completion of the video game REM 2. In order to get to REM 5, you need to buy all four other REM games and complete the extra section of each. Yeah, there we go. I got the medallion. All right, we out of here. Should I bother trying to justify how much I love these games? This game is interesting and fun, even though it looks mechanical, soulless, devoid of any story or lore or personality. Also frustrating. They're just good, they're just good puzzles, man. Oh, of course, yes. The symbol on the artifact is an encrypted access code for the next section of REM. So of course, the thing we found was just another key. Find the key to get a key.